You're tuning into The Josh Bernstein Show. Where Josh hammers the truth with the subtleness of a sledgehammer. Remember this, I had 17 people. I didn't, I wasn't running against two people. I had 17 people. Hillary Clinton, I got a similar number to Hillary Clinton and she had Bernie. And she had a hard time putting Bernie away. And Bernie, poor Bernie, he looked so upset. He, you know what? He made a mistake. He shouldn't have made a deal. Sometimes, he, he lost, he lost. First of all, it was rigged. And I'm afraid the election's gonna be rigged, I have to be honest. Because I think my side was rigged. If I didn't win by massive landslides, I mean, think of what we won in New York and in Indiana, California, 78%. That's with other people in the, in the race. Welcome to another hard-hitting edition of The Josh Bernstein Show. The Josh Bernstein Show starts where the rest of the media ends. Today's show is gonna be an awesome show, no doubt. We're gonna talk about a lot of different things. First, we're gonna talk about the poll numbers and why I think that they are absolutely categorically false. Uh, I'm also gonna talk in length about Gary Johnson and some of the uh, numbers that we're seeing in some of the swing states with Gary Johnson and why he is more of a threat to Donald Trump than Hillary Clinton. And then, a little bit later on in the program, we are going to be joined by Paul Nealon. Paul Nealon is challenging Speaker Paul Ryan, or as I call him, Paul Ryanoceros, for his seat in the 1st Congressional District in Wisconsin. So that's going to be an awesome, awesome interview a little bit later on in the program. But first, I started today's program with the video of Donald Trump saying that the election is rigged. Now, the fundamental question is, will this be rigged? Well, I can assure you folks this, that in the future weeks to come, I will be spending a lot of time on doing shows that are gonna be dedicated to fighting voter fraud. I will be exposing voter fraud as much as I possibly can. I'm gonna talk about voter fraud here even a little bit today, but I don't know, anything is possible. We've seen how they rigged it against Bernie Sanders. We've seen from the DNC leaks that he never even had an opportunity or a chance. So yes, anything is possible. Now before I get into what I was gonna talk about, let's talk about the polls real quick. CNN is now reporting that Hillary is up by seven, eight, or nine points or whatever over Donald Trump. Do not believe it. I got four words for you, America. Don't believe the polls, all right? They're wrong. Now, why do I say that? It's very clear. With the DNC leaks and everything that went on with that, the Democrats had the most chaotic, the most divisive, and the most dysfunctional national convention in modern history, all right? Now, the only thing that the media can do, because they saw everything through the DNC leaks, they saw all the chaos, they saw the anger, the vitriol, the Bernie Sanders people booing, the riots outside, they saw it all. So what have they done? They've now tried to divert the Americans' attention to made-up polls, all right? I don't believe the polls. I believe that Donald Trump is up probably seven to 10 points nationally, and probably between three and seven points in most of the swing states. So do not buy into these garbage polls that are out there. But make no mistake about it, folks. This election is literally the most important election of our lifetimes. Your freedom, your right to defend yourself, your right to freedom of speech, all of it is hanging in the balance at the outcome of this election. And God forbid if Hillary Clinton gets elected, it will be doomsday in America. There's no question about it. There's many factors here that could play out. You could have situations where um, the folks that were for Hillary Clinton before the convention and you know were going to vote for Bernie Sanders, but yet before the convention, they were gonna stick with Hillary. Now you're seeing a major fracture you're seeing a lot of Bernie Sanders supporters, which I'm gonna get into here in just a second, that are now saying that they will not, under any circumstances, vote for Hillary Clinton. You're, all gonna see, you're also gonna see a lot of Bernie Sanders supporters that are gonna write Bernie Sanders' name in, and you're gonna see some Bernie Sanders supporters 
that are either going to stay home or vote for Donald Trump or vote for Jill Stein. I do not believe that the base of the Democratic Party is going to solidify for Hillary Clinton. I think that too much damage has been done. Now, you could say the same thing about the Republicans and the Never Trumpers, and we'll get to that a little bit later, but I don't think it was as severe as what has happened on the DNC side. So I mentioned earlier that Bernie Sanders supporters are more than likely not going to vote for Hillary Clinton. Now, why do I say that? We'll go ahead and roll this clip. I'm Calvin Phillips with Campus Reform. Today we're in Philadelphia at the DNC talking to angry Bernie protesters about whether or not they're going to be voting for Hillary in November or switching parties to vote for Donald Trump. Let's see what they have to say. I was strong for Bernie and uh, now I'm taking the stand for Trump. Okay. I'm going to use all of my time and energy to make sure Hillary doesn't win after the convention. So in a swing state you consider Trump? Yes. And do you think other Bernie supporters in swing states will consider voting for Trump to deny Hillary office? I know they will. I know a lot of them and they already said they will. If I had to vote for a Trump or Hillary, I'd pick Trump. You say that you would possibly consider voting for Trump if the race were close. Do you think other Bernie supporters would do that? Absolutely. You guys need to know. It wouldn't be surprising to you to see a big chunk of the Bernie people go to Trump? No, no. And I, no, it wouldn't. And I, I have a f many intelligent peers within this movement who have said the same thing. Uh, some people that m maybe Bernie is the person that they stuck with right now, but there are some things just anti-establishment and they'll go with Trump to send that message. I've posted on it on my social media and quite a few people are going to go with Trump. So as you can see from that clip, these are very angry very frustrated, loyal Bernie Sanders supporters that have now said that they will not support Hillary Clinton. They saw what happened at the DNC in plain view, plain view as most Americans have, and they're fed up, they're pissed off, and they're not going to vote for Hillary Clinton. So I think in the end, if this is an election as I believe it to be, an election of who do you hate the least, I think uh, the advantage certainly is going to go to Trump, but we got, uh, what, 100 days left, so we shall see uh, what transpires from there. But that brings me to the main topic that I wanted to talk about today, and that is the candidacy of libertarian candidate Gary Johnson, okay? Now, let me be completely clear here, all right? You have to be a really big Johnson to want to go out and vote for Gary Johnson. In fact, I would say it this way. You have got to have a Johnson welded, Johnson weld, welded to your forehead not to vote for Donald Trump. The stakes are way too high. Gary Johnson is polling right now somewhere close to 10% nationally and somewhere in the swing states uh, possibly even higher. The last thing that we can ever have happen is to have another Ross Perot 2.0 2017 style. I'm going to get into that here in just a minute. So why am I attacking an anti-war, pot-smoking libertarian? Well, it's pretty simple. As I said before, his poll numbers have gone up quite a bit, and he does present uh, a dangerous path for Donald Trump if his numbers continue to rise. So I felt that it was my responsibility as well as many others in the media to take notice of Gary Johnson and to do what we can to make sure that folks understand, especially the never Trumpers, that with Gary Johnson you are not getting what you think you ought to be getting. Okay? Now, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take us down a trip down memory lane. The year is 1992. The election at the time was supposed to be between Bill Clinton and George H. Walker Bush. And if that election in 1992 was between just those two, history and statistics show that George H. Walker Bush would have beaten handedly Bill Clinton, and we would have never had the nightmarish, diabolical, most corrupt political family in history in office. 
And we certainly would not be threatened with the remnants of the Clinton regime in the year 2016 in the female form as with Hillary Clinton. But that's not what happened. It wasn't those two. And enter Henry Ross Perot. This is a Texas billionaire who ran for president as an independent in the 1992 general election and actually garnered an astounding 18% of the popular vote, okay? Now, uh, I'm gonna show you a graph and then I'm gonna discuss what this graph says. So as you can see in this graph that we have up here on the screen, Bill Clinton, the Democrat, carried 32 states with 44,909,806 total votes, which is 43% of the total vote. George H. Walker Bush, the Republican, carried only 18 states with 39,104,560 total votes, which was 37.5% of the total vote. And Ross Perot, can I finish? Ross Perot, the independent, carried zero, none, nada, zilch, zero states, but still received 19,743,821 total votes, which was an incredible 19% of the entire popular vote. It is proven that if Ross Perot was not in the race, we would have never had the Clintons. That's why I'm bringing the attention to Gary Johnson. This is the best, most modern example where a third party candidate has devastating consequences in a general election. So who is Gary Johnson? Let's talk about that. Well, Gary Johnson is an entrepreneur. Gary Johnson is a businessman. Gary Johnson is a two-term governor of the state of New Mexico. He's running, as he ran in 2012, on the libertarian ticket for the third party for the presidency. Johnson, let's talk about some of the good things he's done. Johnson cut spending and taxes as governor of New Mexico. He vetoed a lot of bad legislation. As a matter of fact, he vetoed more bills than all the other 49 governors combined. Now, let's talk about some of the not so great stuff. He's very, very pro-marijuana. He has said that he wants to decriminalize all drugs, cocaine, crack, heroin, doesn't matter. He wants to decriminalize it all. He is the only candidate that publicly has stated that they support the Trans-Pacific Partnership. We know Donald Trump is against it, and we know that Hillary Clinton, wink, wink, says she's against it now, but we also know that she lies and that she would totally sign on to the Trans-Pacific Partnership. She even said, well, I would maybe make one or two minor little adjustments in it, which is bull because you're not allowed to do that because the way it was set up through the Trade Promotion Authority, it cannot be changed. It can only be an up or down vote. So once again, Hillary Clinton is caught in her 10 trillionth lie. Um, he is also the candidate that has pledged to cut the military by a whopping 43%. So think about that. You've got a emerging Russia. You've got a belligerent China. You've got a threatening Iran. You've got an unstable North Korea. You've got the Middle East ready to explode into a tinderbox. And this moron wants to cut the military by 43%, which, by the way, the military right now is at its lowest level since the 1950s, folks. So I don't know where you're going to go much more. Are we going to go back to, to muskets? Is that what we're going to do? We're going to go back to the, the musket days? Then he's also pledged to cut our nuclear facility and our cache of weapons to, uh, to uh, a much smaller amount. Again, the military is built up in China. We're paying for it. We've built up their, uh, their military. We've got the Russians. 
also building up their military. We've got other uh, countries, uh, Iran now trying to become a nuclear state. We've got the North Koreans. We've got Pakistan. We, we've got all these countries that have nuclear weapons, and this idiot, this moron, wants to reduce our weapons capability in nuclear weapons. He's pro-gay marriage, and he's an open borders amnesty type person. So conservatives out there, people that think that somehow you're going to do a protest vote by, uh, by voting for this Gary Johnson guy, you're crazy. All you're doing is helping Hillary Clinton. You know, and I'm going to talk about this in the next segment, but something that Hugh Hewitt said, and he's finally come around because he's been a very big never-Trumper, but he said, just like James Carville said way back when, it's the economy, stupid. Well, guess what? In this case, it's the Supreme Court, stupid. And you got four or five judges that can barely fog a mirror. This is what this boils down to. Whether you like Trump or not doesn't matter. It is the Supreme Court, and that is what is most important here. Okay? Now, in 2012, Gary Johnson garnered 0.99% of the total vote. Now, in the 2012 election with Mitt Romney and Barack Obama, he actually got 1,275,821 total votes. Okay? Barack Obama beat Mitt Romney by 3,473,402 total votes. So, if you take that 1,275,821 of those votes, they could have gone to Mitt Romney instead, but they didn't. Why? Because they were protest votes and they went to this idiot, Gary Johnson. So if Gary Johnson essentially was not in the 2012 race, I'm not saying that Mitt Romney would have won because we all know that millions of Americans stayed home because they couldn't support a Mormon for president. I mean, unbelievable. So they instead supported a Muslim for president or they stayed home and didn't vote. But it would have been a hell of a lot closer, okay? Because if you take that 3,473,402 and you divide it by the 12 swing states that really mattered, that was 289,450 votes on average per state that Barack Obama won by. If you take that 3,473,402 less Gary Johnson's 1,275,821 votes now you have 2,197,581. If you take that number, divide that number by the 12 swing states, now your difference is only 183,100. But that's not where it ends. Where it ends is where I'm going to be talking about in the next few weeks. And that is massive, absolutely massive amounts of voter fraud. And taking it at a low number, not a high number, even a low number, if you take that 183,000 that Barack Obama, quote, would have won by against Mitt Romney in those 12 swing states, and you take that number times 10%, well, guess what? That means that you have close to 2 million, 1, 1, 830,000, but close to 2 million illegitimate votes, votes that never should have been counted, people that were dead on the voter rolls in North Carolina. Uh, you had places reporting 100% for Obama, zero for Romney, which is impossible. You had murals on the wall when you go into the voting stations. You had the Black Panthers. I mean, there was so much voter fraud in the 2008 and the 2012 election. If you take a minimum of those two million fraudulent votes away, more than likely, Mitt Romney would have been the president. I'm not saying he would have been the greatest president, but it would have been a hell of a lot better than the communist in chief that we have now. Now, here's the thing. To the folks out there that somehow think that this Gary Johnson character is this limited government, uh, libertarian type guy, yes, on certain issues, he is. But on other issues, he's more establishment than a John McCain or a Jeb Bush or a John Kasich. And I already pointed those things out. But if you really want to break it down and look at it, look at the fact that Donald Trump already gives you everything that you want for the most part in a candidate. 
because he's the closest thing in modern history to running as a Republican that is an actual libertarian or Jeffersonian Democrat. It's pretty simple. Protectionist trade policies, very similar to what a libertarian would believe. Less global intervention, again, very similar to what a Rand Paul or a Ron Paul or a Gary Johnson would believe, right? Doesn't want to police the world. Again, same thing, very libertarian in his belief structure. And then, you get the benefits of a conservative. Cutting taxes, reducing spending. He wants to repeal uh, Glass-Steagall, um, possibly pull us out of NATO, maybe pull us out of the United Nations. Conservatives need to wake up and realize that a lot of Donald Trump's positions are conservative positions. He's already given you a list of the people that he would support and appoint to the Supreme Court. What else do you want? So he's bold, so he's brash, so he speaks off the cuff, so he speaks with his hands, so he's a tough-talking New Yorker. Big deal. Deal with it. Get out there and realize that your vote or your non-vote or your vote for Hillary is going to commit national suicide for America. I can't say it any clearer than that. Now, why am I bashing choices? People say, well, Josh, you know, it's a libertarian. Our, vo our voices should count. I would agree with that. And I think that all voices should count, but not in a general election. And I'll tell you why. Because the way that our two-party system is set up, it punishes an independent for voting for one candidate or the other. It's going to hurt one candidate over the other. Now, if we had a different system in which we had a runoff election and the top two vote-getters got to move on to face each other in the general, then yes, that would be a much different scenario. That way you could have a Democrat against a Republican, a Democrat against the Independent, an Independent against a Republican, whatever. The top two vote-getters would then square off to find out who was going to win. That way a true Independent doesn't feel as though they're wasting their vote by voting for the third party, which again, the way the system is structured now is a wasted vote. You can argue that to your blue in the face. It is a wasted vote. It will help the other candidate and will have unintended, unintended consequences. Now, if America was more like Israel and more like the Knesset, it'd be a whole different ball game. I would say, you know what? Let's have independence. Let's have, let's have the Constitution Party. Let's have the conservatarian part, whatever. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Because with the way that it works in Israel, you have the Knesset, which is a unicameral national legislation in Israel. And what they do is the Knesset passes all the laws, but it also elects the president, it elects the prime minister, but it also gives that prime minister the authority to dissolve dysfunctional governments, something that we do not have. All right? Now, in Israel, they don't necessarily vote for a person. Like, they don't vote for a Donald Trump or a Hillary Clinton or a Gary John. No, they vote for party lists. So, for instance, you have the Likud party, which thankfully, thank God, is in control in Israel. That's uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's party. They are the conservative right. They are uh, national defense war hawks. Uh, then you have the Kulanu party, which is a centrist, more left-leaning party. Then you have Jewish Home, which is the ultra-religious ultra -religious Jews. Uh, and then you have the Zionist Union Party, which is your far-left labor, uh, two-state solution, liberal-type party. So what happens with their government is that the winning parties get to make up the majority of the government. The ones that don't get that many seats voted in are the opposition. So the good part about that is that truly the people that the electorate, in this case the Knesset, really the people of Israel want to put into the Knesset, will be representative of them. So what it does essentially in some respects is it takes away the money, it takes away the cronyism, and it takes away some of the favoritism. That's what I would hope that America would go to. And before we even did that, let's get rid of the Electoral College folks completely. Let's go to the popular vote only. 
because the popular vote would certainly favor Donald Trump and it would probably favor Donald Trump by millions. But he's running into a tough situation because he's got these never Trumper idiots out there that are going to waste their vote and possibly elect Hillary Clinton because they're going to vote for Gary Johnson. Unbelievable. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm TV host, political analyst, and national spokesman Josh Bernstein. I want to personally thank you for watching my video and supporting my show. Please also subscribe to my channel, and if you would like to comment, no problem. Good, bad, and different, just keep it clean. Every Wednesday, I will have new videos out onto this channel, and I do appreciate you watching. And remember, The Josh Bernstein Show starts where the rest of the media ends.